I'm gonna give a contrasting one. Okay. For that I think people, someone at the last Nix <clears throat> conference called Planet Nix <clears throat> in North America demoed they were using Nix OS to power their uh, schools. He was like from Oregon. I wish I could remember his name. They bought a bunch of Chromebooks. He he got a bunch of donated Chromebooks and ran Nix OS on them and just uh, put the flat pack app server on it and gave it back to the school. <laughs> they don't know they're running NixOS. They're just running Flatpak. Mm. And, but he's able to configure the other stuff that you might want, like a reboot cycle. Like, oh, you know, he's a system administrator for that school. <clears throat> he did all the setup. They don't know they're running NixOS. I consider that a huge win. They're getting a lot of the power and efficacy of NixOS, but you know, they might not need to like write NixOS configurations in the same way, like look at all the people that use Linux. I mean, clearly a lot of them just want something that mimics a really turnkey distribution like Ubuntu or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to do um, Linux from scratch or Arch mm-hmm. or Gen 2. <clears throat> so I used to be really hard on pushing people to Nix. And I've gotten a little more like, I have this central one sentence, like part of Nix, the problem is like software works pretty good already. Mm -hmm. Like you use Nix and you think, holy shit, nothing should be working. Like you really come away with that. You're like, how is anything working? Like, Mm -hmm. but you know, we're on this video camera, things are working. And it's because like, a bunch of other people are spending so much time fixing their software. Mm-hmm. Like the the care and effort Don put into his distri- his own personal app, people are putting into all their software. Mm-hmm. To, so it works in all these bespoke cases. And, and like, that's cool, but it also devalues. Like Nix is saying like, you don't have to do that right. and we'll make it work just, you know, without that, but everyone's still doing all that work. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. I used to put, I still love it. I mean, we could talk about how much joy I think you can hear from his voice when he talks about it. Like people that love control mm-hmm. and like knowing what's going on. And that's why I, I run NixOS, like mm-hmm. brings me immense joy. But a lot of people are like, should I use it? I'm like, no. Like uh, there's some other Nix stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I steer them towards first to get them hooked. Um, but yeah, because because I've been bitten, like I have them use NixOS. Inevitably, they hit a paper cut. It's software. It has a bug, and right. you know, and for me to attract them, the first thing I did was like I told them like this is perfect software, <laughs> like this is going to solve all your problems. Right, right. And sure, you said the expectations them, like, way too high then. Way too high, and the and the reality is also the delta is like not that far, because most software. I have more trouble running some software now on NixOS than I do on a normal Linux distribution. Like that's messed up. That's weird. Mm -hmm. A, because like NixOS should be, I mean, once I get it to run on NixOS, I've told myself like it'll run forever perfectly. And Mm -hmm. like, that's the goal. But, but as a new user, if, if you're being inspired to use NixOS, cause it's like, things are going to work it's it, like that's the sales pitch like software that works it's reproducible reliable and you come on you open neo vim or vs code and it just startly starts like flashing error messages as it's doing things that don't work you're gonna be like what the heck is going on um <clears throat> especially without the understanding of like it's trying to rebuild things from the ground up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that said i think like People that usually use Linux love control. Like if you're already starting off as a Linux user, mm-hmm. I think you skew more in the like, I like what's knowing on, you know, what's going on with my machine. Right. Like that's the beauty of Linux that I, I don't like. I have to use a MacBook for work. Like the beauty that you can just grep the root mm-hmm. and find some knob is like amazing. Mm-hmm. And then twiddle it. <clears throat> so... I think like, you know, it's okay. Like I'll, I'll still push people definitely like their windows or Mac. I don't know. They're, they're lost already. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, like that's something we can keep talking about it, Don, but that's like, uh, I don't know. 
that too spicy? Like I'm on a chat about pro Knicks and I'm kind of like, yeah. <laughs> no, I talked about. I do think it is good to be honest about the state the things actually are in because I will often see people talk about Knicks as if. You know, I, I'll get these comments like Nick solves that, Nick solves this. Like you, you, you get these comments from time to time, and yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Nick's does solve a lot of problems, but I don't really hear people talk about what can go wrong with it. Besides the fact that the functional programming is, you know, fun it's functional programming. You you get what you get with functional programming. Um, the introduction is kind of. I, I, I don't think I know anyone who uses Nix who would disagree that the introduction to Nix is not as good as it could be. And there could be better resources out there uh, to onboard people into making use of these tools. But I don't really hear people talk about those issues that come with actually using it and things that might go wrong because of the file structure, because things aren't maybe set up correctly to work inside of Nix and things like that. Yes, it's yeah. Uh, for example, that VS Code uh, example. <clears throat> I think one of one of the issues uh, I've encountered when I I don't use VS Code these days, but when I did Home Manager, I used to install a, a VS Code via Home Manager and to <laughs> configure it via Home Manager. It, it, it's a lot of value because I can declare all the settings and all the Extensions I want via Home Manager, it's, it's all tracked in my uh, my Git repo. But then, what I cannot do is ask VS Code via itself <laughs> to go in and change some configuration mm -hmm. because it cannot because the configuration file is a read-only file in the Nix store. Right. And sometimes VS Code wants to do that, and it kind of, you know, sorts of like it asks you a question. I don't remember exactly. It asks you a question, and and you say yes or no, and then it's, it's, it says, okay, I will remember what you said. But what is remembering? It's like setting some config option, mm -hmm. and then it gives you an error. Cannot write to my config option. So there's a mismatch between how Nix wants to use programs. Mm -hmm. And how programs expect to be used right. sometimes, right? With simpler utilities, you know, maybe they don't write to their own uh, configuration file. M many programs don't write to their own configuration files, mm -hmm. but many programs do. <laughs> so it's kind of an, an inversion of control, and that's exact. That's exactly what we mean by Nix solves that. <laughs> Git, for example, another program that r can write to its own when you do git config with the global flag mm -hmm. it can write to the git to the user's git configuration file mm -hmm. but but nix solves that that it solves that in in a in a greater level like i want everything to do to be done via nix so i give up that feature of of the app right. trying to configure itself so you have to do an extra step you have to i don't even know how it's how it works, uh, maybe you have to tell VS Code, hey, don't bother doing trying to do this thing again. Mm -hmm. that, that's a paper cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, software just needs to be so curated to work. <laughs> it, it needs to be developed with NixOS in mind, or it's like a lot of labor and love. It's like the ultimate yak shave to get things to work. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of software that wants to self-update, for instance, that's a mm. classic one. That needs to be patched away. Well, or you're we're just on Discord constant. right now. Discord. Using that, Discord like... from the browser. Fair Thank enough. You. Fair enough. <laughs> That's my answer on MixOS for a lot of things. Is the well and, and Linux, like because mm -hmm. the Linux installable versions of things tend to suck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like if there's a really great maintainer, that software is going to be great. But for a lot of things, it's like someone just wanted some working version of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nix packages is great. It's very easy to get started. Mm -hmm. They throw it in there, but it's got a lot of these paper cuts. Right. And, and like, I don't know, your software is like the paper cuts matter. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's uh, the, that, that sheer amount of them, you know, like, um, 
I don't know what the audit is. We, they do a big community survey. Mm -hmm. Nix has a lot of people. You could use it like as a home manager. I'm uh, sorry, as a homebrew. If you're from Mac, get it's got a big install base. <clears throat> people use NixOS on the server. I think probably the next largest because you care less about these paper cuts. It's like it's there. It's in the cloud. It's running. I don't care. Right, right. NixOS people running on your laptops, which I do, <clears throat> or your personal desktop. Like when I went to NixCon, like you know, way smaller because you have to be a masochist to want to deal with these paper cuts. And like, it's joy, actually. Like, I like, and I think that's what you find right now. That's kind of the niche of the community is like, you, you want to like yak shave all the way through. And uh, if you guys don't know what yak shave is, it's a saying where like one task leads to another and you're like endlessly, you went to s start to do something and now you're like doing something, you're shaving a yak right, as right, the saying right. goes. So, you know, like I'll just fire up my laptop sometimes and it just, I'm like, I like hacking. I'm like, I'll open it up, something breaks, and I'll just pull on that thread and go fix it. Like, that's probably not for most people. 